Hi, my name's Kevin and welcome to another video. This is part two of a small series I'm doing about this cutter grinder which I've made. Um, in this episode we're going to have a look at the mechanism on the back here, actually machining that, um, how I went about machining it, and also the main frame which the cutter grinder sits on. So I'll just take this off quickly. So we're going to have a look at this part, actually machining that. Um, and you know, I wanted to get this nice curve on here to actually match the top of this. So when it rotates, this will follow around here because eventually I'm going to um, probably put some graduations on here to give me my degrees for um, sharpening cutters. You know, like things like one, one degree, seven degrees, 10 degrees, whatever degrees it needs to be. I'll mark those around this um, sort of semicircle, and then, uh, you know, I'll be able to set this accurately to that. Uh, that was either going to be, the, I was even going to do it that way, or I was going to have a look at, um, I was going to have a look at using a digital angle machine. So, um, brilliant machines these are. Um, they'll find any degrees of rotation or whatever. So I may even do that. I may just use that simply sitting on the top and set it, you know, set it, you know, using it that way. So, but I'll have a think about that anyway. At the moment, I'm going to still machine it, you know, and set it all up as though I'm going to put the graduations on, but I'll just have to see. I just thought I'd bring you in closer and uh, just show you how one of these angle machines works. They're a brilliant invention. Uh, it makes setup so much easier. You know, like instead of measuring equipment and all that, you can just put one of these on the top, move your part, you know, and it's already set. So um, at the moment it's set to zero and uh, it's gone to sleep at the moment, but as soon as we move this, it'll wake up again. So yeah, as you can see, we can then set that to whatever degrees we want. So if we want it at one degree, it is quite fiddly to get it there, but it, you know, for something like a cutter, we haven't got to be 100%. So there's one degree, as you see, and then obviously we can go up to whatever we want. So um, brilliant, you know, brilliant little device, and I'm really, you know, I really like using it. Also in the video, I'll be showing you how I made the back mechanism for uh, rotating the cutters, you know, to 90 degrees. So this particular ring. I can do either a twin flute, two flutes, or I can do four. Um, you can't do a three fluted cutter, so um, at some point I'll make another one of these rings with just three divisions in it, and then obviously I can do three flutes. But at the moment I'm just going to concentrate on four and two. They're the main cutters what I use, so um, you know that's going to be fine anyway. So I'll let you watch the videos, and then obviously at the end don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. That would be brilliant. I turned the ring on the lathe just from some bar stock, and here I'm going to lay out some um, 90 degree, you know, degree divisions. So I'm just putting some layout die on, and then I'll mark those. So I just eyeballed the setup on here. As you can see, I'm just using some parallels. And what I'll do is I'll line the two score marks up with the parallels, and that'll get me, you know, pretty much. It hasn't got to be 100%. You know, we're not dealing down to thousands here. You know, eyeballing this is going to be perfectly okay. I'm going to use the stop on this part because I've got a rotator, obviously, four times. So using the stop, I can just take the workpiece out, turn it over, and then put it in and push it up against the stop, and then that'll, you know, I'll know that that's in the correct position. And I'm just eyeballing the cutter here off the side. Um, I haven't, you know, I'm not going to use an edge finder or anything like that. I just don't need to. 
and then I'll set the DRO. So each time I rotate the piece, I can use the DRO, you know, obviously to come up to the part and then um, machine. I think I machined this in about two mil from the edge. So I can do that four times. And here I've rotated the part and I'm just going to set it up for the next cut. So I've got that steel reel there because that's quite close to where the score lines are. So I'll just eyeball it to set it up for the next cut. And as you can see we've got the part up against the stop. And we're just using the DRO just to machine in again. And same again, we're just setting up for the next cut. After machining all four cuts, we then have to slice or put a slip straight through here. So this allows us to clamp the part onto, um, you know, onto the shaft itself. And here's the finished part. And it's a nice tight, tight fit. Next to be machined was the frame itself. So here I'm just setting up and finding the centre of the rotary table. Oh, that's the compressor you can hear just starting up in the background. And here's the workpiece, and again we've obviously got to find the centre line of that as well. see it's within about half a thou so that's you know that's plenty good enough for this sort of thing. This is actually a machine in the arc on the top of the workpiece. Uh, I've just set up with a um, fluid you know with a fluid spray coolant spray um, device and I just thought I'd have a mess around with that while I was cutting this. And that worked pretty well. So now I'm just giving it a finished cut. And then I've got to cut down the side. So the I did leave a little bit of spare material on here just to trim it up to you know get it looking nice and that. And fly cutting was going to be the easiest way of doing this to leave a nice finish. Again, I've used that angle machine here as well to set it to zero degrees.
Well, that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in part three.